Hey everyone, wishing everyone a happy 4th of July or whenever you are watching this video. I love being an American. America has given me many opportunities for a first generation American like me to be able to grow my wealth. And that's exactly what we do on this channel is make money. So one of my goals, if you guys remember in my end of the year video last year, was to get at least 11 stocks to the $1,000 in total equity mark. And today, I'm happy to announce that I finally have reached that goal. So what exactly does this mean and why did I pick $1,000? It doesn't actually mean anything. $1,000 is just an arbitrary number that I picked, so I was incentivized to diversify among many different stocks. Humans love nice and round numbers. A basketball player who averages 10 points, 10 rebounds, and 10 assists would be considered much better than somebody who averages 9 points, 9 rebounds, and 9 assists. Today I'm going to be going over my biggest positions just to give a brief update on them and how they've been doing since the whole C19 situation started. I'm also back to beating the market here. As you guys can see in the last year, the S&P 500 is up about 5.39%, while I am up about 7%. A little over 7%. So that's great, but I want to be able to consistently beat the market for long periods of time. That's what actually matters. Let's see how I can continue to keep that going. All right, guys, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and I also want to hear how many stocks that you guys have over $1,000 in equity. If you guys could please let me know in the comments, that would be really cool to see and compare. Starting off with here, we have uh, the stocks being listed by the amount of equity that I actually have in them. So I actually totally forgot that today, uh, the Friday before the 4th of July is actually a holiday, which uh, I wasn't accounting for. So I had actually meant to buy another share of my McDonald's today, which would have gotten me over that uh, $1,000 mark for them. But I still have 11 stocks. Uh, with $1,000 and then once I add McDonald's now on Monday, that's going to be 12 stocks. So let's talk a little bit about McDonald's here. So as you can see, I'm down on them. One of the few stocks here that I have a large equity in that I'm actually down on, but with dividends and everything, it's actually not down by much. For McDonald's, thank God for its drive through systems because they're still able to generate that revenue. Only about 15% of their stores are offering dine-in and they are in no rush to open prematurely. Anecdotally, I've still been going to McDonald's on lunch breaks and both of their lanes for their drive through are packed whenever I go. I can see their bottom line being hurt, but they're still going to be a profitable company. Even if the C19 does surge, they're going to be able to rely on that power of that drive through I mean, even in the worst stages of the C19, drive throughs and takeout orders were still allowed. So remember, this is a worldwide fast food chain as well as a de facto real estate company. McDonald's still has not recovered from its price to what it was in the pre-C19 days back when I was buying them at near all-time highs, uh, which is you'll see as a common theme uh, among when I do my buying, unfortunately. So McDonald's uh, still not at a bargain really here with a P.E. ratio of about 24, uh, and there's a chance that this could go lower and you can get a starting yield of about 3%, and this is a dividend aristocrat. Its 52-week high is in the 221s and 200 day moving average is 190. So this would actually be a time for me to capitalize. I could get my average cost down. All right, when we continue to go up through this list here, we can see that JP Morgan is another one that I have over a thousand dollars of equity in. And these banks have been in the news a lot. That's because there's been concern that the Federal Reserve will limit how much dividend banks can pay based on their stress capital test. While Wells Fargo is planning a dividend cut in the future here. Chase CEO Jamie Dimon said that Chase can continue to pay its dividend in future quarters while maintaining healthy capital and liquidity positions. Now, will Chase increase their dividend aggressively like they've been doing in the past couple years? Probably not, probably not. But people are going to need places to store their money. They're gonna be able to need to get loans, whether that's for their houses or businesses. And Chase basically has the power to print money and uh, they are the largest bank in the US. They have over $2.7 trillion in assets. And there's just no way that I could ever see them failing. Right now you can get a starting yield of about almost 4% and it's well below its 52 week high of 141, which I also bought around that mark uh, 
pre C19 days, and their 200 day moving average is 110. So, another great opportunity for me to be able to get my average cost lower on a nice blue chip company like them. And then the next one is as about as safe as you can get, and that is the utility company Duke Energy. So most utilities actually have a government allowed monopoly in the regions that they serve. So anytime I see a stock like this go down in price, I really am just scratching my head. And I just wonder why, because people are going to be prioritizing paying their electric bills. You're not going to make it very far in 2020 without electricity. Utility stocks sort of act similar to bonds. You're basically just holding them for their yields and stability at this point. This one is a no-brainer, guys. Buy, stash, collect cash. Let's go, guys. And then next up here, we got Applied Materials. Applied Materials is a semiconductor company, and they usually don't do very well in times of a recession. But during their last conference call in May, the company said that they said their constraints were with its supplies, not demand for their raw materials. So Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing said that they are opening a $12 billion plant in the U.S. with the U.S. government's backing. It's going to be in the state of Arizona. And that's going to be a huge win for AMAT because they will need AMAT's machines for their operations. So this is a great company here. I'm up $165 or about 18%. And they're actually only down about 8% from their pre-C19 days. So Applied Materials, another great stock to just be holding there. And then next up we have 3M, M, M, M. I'm actually down on this position as well. So you guys will see that this is actually the last stock that I'm down on in my 12 biggest companies. And from here on out, we will see nothing but green for total returns. So 3M makes about 3% of my portfolio. And it's actually a very cyclical company. It's actually expected for them to see declines like this uh, when we're going through tough times. So they also do close to one third of their sales in Asia, which has been hit really hard with the C-19. And then the trade wars that we've been having, that's not making stuff any better really for them as well. But 3M is unstoppable at this point with all their face masks, with all their N95 masks. They have over 55,000 different products and safety, adhesives, transportation, consumer and healthcare, among many, many more. They're just way too important in this world. Uh, for people to be able to do their jobs. Plus they have over a hundred thousand different patents. This is a very research and innovative driven company. This dividend king is going to be just fine. You're now going to get a starting yield at about 4%, which is very, very good. And then another amazing company is United Health here. It's actually the largest insurance provider in the United States. They just increased their dividend by 16%. Their 10-year growth rate is an amazing 63%, and their payout ratio is somehow just 30%. United Healthcare saw a double-digit increase in its Medicare revenue, and there is a new baby boomer retiring every single day, which should only help them. Their revenue growth each year has been just out of this world, and it also has a very fantastic balance sheet as well. This is the epitome of what you want to see in a stock. During the last 10 years, UNH has two times the total S&P 500 return, 25% annualized return compared to just 12% annual return from the S&P 500. That is absolutely blowing the market out of the water. I need to add to this stock ASAP. As you guys can see, I only have four shares and I have a total return of about 22%, and they just increased their dividend, as I mentioned. So that's really nice to see a company do that. And they're really giving back to their shareholders and just expect fantastic things from them in the future. The next stock I own is Equinix, which has only two shares of them, but I have over $1,400 in equity. So this is a data center REIT, and this one has really been an essential part for businesses if they want to be able to store or distribute data. So they have over 200 data centers in 55 different countries. Be sure to check out my more in-depth analysis video on them if you want to hear even more. Even with the C19 situation, the guidance for this company is still expected to 6 to 8% revenue growth, which is pretty amazing given the circumstances that we are under. It's nice to own companies that are just so integral to a part of doing business that uh, they can't really go without their services. So, 
So good luck running a business without uh, having any sort of backup or a place where to store all your info. Uh, that's why Equinix is so powerful here. So the next two I'm actually going to be lumping together and that is both MasterCard and Visa. So these are two great companies and just because I'm lumping them together doesn't mean I don't love either of them, but they are just too similar in their business models here basically. Uh, this is probably my favorite sector and business model because they are the middleman between transactions between vendors and consumers. There's basically no risk here, and with people doing more and more online shopping during the C19 situation, cards are basically a necessity at this point. Both have not recovered from their pre-C19 levels, and that's just because people aren't spending as much money as they were pre-C19, and that's all going to be short term because one day we will get over this. MasterCard and Visa are both buys, stash, collect cash stocks here, so MasterCard I'm up. Uh, only about 9.73%, which is $161, but Visa, I'm up $213, or about 18.48%, and of course, they both pay dividends, which aren't factored into that as well. Very small dividends, but uh, we can't uh, knock them too much since they uh, give us very good capital returns in share appreciation. All right, then the next stock is NVIDIA here at $385 in share price. This stock has absolutely been roaring here. In just the last year, it's up 135%, and it's up just 61% this year alone. Compared to how bad the market's doing, that is just incredible. So NVIDIA does a lot in the gaming field, and what have people been stuck doing at home during these last four months? That's right, nonstop trips to the refrigerator. <laughs> but people also love playing video games. Investors also love what NVIDIA is doing in the artificial intelligence field and its acquisition of Mellanox should only grow their bottom line by at least 13%. So AI is going to be huge here and, and all of the artificial intelligence needed for cars to be able to have autonomous driving. NVIDIA is going to be a huge player in that. And as you guys can see, I'm up $456 or 42%. NVIDIA still is only a $236 billion market cap company and uh, it pays a very, very small dividend. But uh, these, these returns over the last year or so have just been incredible. And you can probably guess what my final two stocks are. Microsoft coming in here at number two. So they no longer have any more physical stores. They are fine closing down all of them and just doing online stores. I personally uh, am a little skeptical about that, but I'm gonna be assuming that Microsoft management knows much better than I do. So Microsoft cloud sales are up considerably. Their office products are always hot in demand. LinkedIn is becoming more and more popular and seeing a surge in traffic because so many more people are unemployed these days, unfortunately. Microsoft is a no-brainer investment. So we have $833 in total return. This is actually past the $2,000 mark in total equity. It makes up about 6.61% of my uh, total portfolio. A great company to be having such a solid foundation like that. And as you guys can see, I've been rewarded very well in the past here, if we look at all the dividends it received since I first got mine over two years ago now and how much it's grown and will continue to grow the longer I own it. All right, and then this should be no surprise to anyone, but the number one largest position in my portfolio is NRZ. Oh wait, no, how did that get there? It's actually Apple here at $2,500 in total equity. Apple share prices just went bananas here in the last three months, up 50% percent and every year they need to launch a new iphone and now people are super stupid excited for the iphone 12 and you know people who have no business financing new phones are going to be going out and buying the latest apple phone solely because it's apple that's the power apple has on people i've been seeing a lot more people have apple wearables lately and that sector alone is now 11% of its revenue. It was this past quarter for Apple. So this is much more than a company that just sells iPhones with its other services and other electronics. Come on guys, say it with me. Buy, stash, collect cash. Apple, phenomenal company here. 
over a thousand dollars in total return 7.45 percent of my portfolio and of course they pay dividends which they have been increasing also now in the amount of dividends for about the last decade here so you can see i started off um spring of 2018 with two dollars and 92 cents and that's grown into five dollars and 74 cents just this past may and that will only continue to grow as i buy more shares of them i only own seven shares 7.01 shares and uh, that's going to continue to be added to uh, as just time progresses and I just keep buying at different price points. So now that I've reached the 1K mark, guys, I guess the next step is getting all these stocks to $2,000 in equity. And then the next step would be getting to $3,000 in equity and so on and so on. So let me know what you guys think of all these positions. And don't forget to like, comment and subscribe as well as enjoy this long holiday weekend. And I'll catch you guys next time.